Thanks for joining the Deer Labs at Mississippi State University and the University of Florida as we continue to enjoy our takeoff on March Madness. We've seen some great head-to-head -head competition as bucks from the MSU Deer Research Facility went head-to-head -head and antler-to-antler -to, -antler to decide the winners. The champions have battled and beaten the seven other forages in their respective regional tournaments. Coming out of the Food Plot and Mineral Stump Regional with soybeans, from the Upright Browse Regional, we have Dogwood. From the Vine Regional, we have Poison Ivy. And from the Forb Regional, Beggar's Lice. Today's guest host has long been a champion in his own right. No one has been the source of more knowledge on how to manage early successional habitat for wildlife. He's the sage, the master of managing timber, old fields, and food plots to produce quality deer forage. Craig Harper is professor and extension wildlife specialist in the Department of Forestry, Wildlife, and Fisheries at the University of Tennessee. Craig, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Steve. And uh, by the way, I put the check in the mail, so appreciate it. <laughs> I was wondering, Craig, did you write that? <laughs> the sage. <laughs> sage. It's true. I mean, nobody knows or has learned more about habitat management than you. I don't, I don't know about that, but uh, we, we've had a good time finding out the information we have over the years. And uh, I remember that gentleman up there in the top right corner uh, doing his share of work while he was here. So we, we, we've learned a lot and we've had fun doing it. That's right. That's certainly right. Yeah, I don't even know if you knew, Craig, but uh, while I was up there, I did quite a, quite a bit of diet selection myself, sampling the different deer forages. I know we've talked about it a little bit here and there, but uh, quite a few things I took a bite of up there that I knew a deer would. Not many of them taste that great to us, but, uh, but it's interesting <laughs> to see how, how some of them differ, particularly mm -hmm. the, the acorns. Uh, I remember somebody, one time I talked about how the, the white oak acorns were sweet, but relatively sweet. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and they say, yeah, I, I, I know now what, term relative means so, <laughs> although it may be sweet to a deer even to us uh white oak acorns are not too sweet mm -hmm. i can vouch for that well guys let's take a closer look at the champs craig would you join bronson and marcus as they break down the four final forages absolutely i think i think this is great fun uh i I thought it was a great idea when y'all asked me to join you that you that you had done this. And uh, I, I think the comparisons of several of the species that you have are, are very interesting, uh, particularly when you consider some species that would occur only in early successional areas, you know, such as old fields that were paired with species that would really only occur in, in woods. And so you don't often have the opportunity, for example, to see how deer may select trumpet creeper side by side with greenbrier, for example. And so if, if you ask me, you know, whether they would choose dogwood over black gum, I would have an opinion. But with regard to some of them that occur in, in really very different vegetation types, uh, I, 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 was, I was interested to see the results. <laughs> Well, I think uh, from my perspective, looking at these these final four right here, I'm a little bit surprised about a couple of them and uh, not so surprised about a couple of the other ones. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting to, to see when we start talking about why we picked which one and uh, comparing that among our notes. Uh, it, it's going to be a really interesting debate here, I think. Why we yeah, think those things got there? I'm I'm not at all surprised with uh, beggar's lice. Although I will ask, which species of beggar's lice did y'all use? That's a great question, and I think we had a mixture of species that were you know we were picking multiple species, and uh, I I want to say that it was. Uh, Panicle, is that the name? Panicle Desmodium would probably dominating it. Paniculatum. Mm -hmm. The safe answer would be Desmodium spa. Yeah, that's what we put on the slide because there were a few species. It's, it's hard to get enough 
biomass to run this several times with with Becker's lice. That's what the that's what the graduate students tell me anyhow. Another one that I found surprising was, or not surprising, that uh, that I thought one thing, one one of the plants that I thought might be in there that a lot of people don't consider is wild lettuce. That one is, is strongly selected by deer, and I, I chose beggar's lice in my prediction for the Forbes, but I figured if that's not correct, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if wild lettuce uh, pulled it out, but obviously it didn't. Well, Craig, you're making me feel better because that was my choice. Well, that was a good one. <laughs> I was torn about that one. Just myself. I, I had, but... Yeah, me too. I, I had three picks for Forbes that I thought uh, it, it was kind of flip a coin a couple times because I correctly w- was lucky. Beggar's Lice is my choice. Pokeweed, I thought, and mainly that was biased because of the crude protein. Uh, but, but pokeweed, I would not have been surprised if that had won. And the, and the same thing for wild lettuce. Th- those are my top three picks. Uh, and luckily, just, just went with beggar's lice. The same thing with uh, with our food plot mineral stumps. Uh, Cuz chose alfalfa. And I know there have been a lot of situations and from, from people that I really trust as well. And a little bit of personal experience about lots of deer. Maybe when they're both available on the landscape, you'll see a lot of selection for alfalfa. Um, so that, that was the one that gave me the most, I guess, competition, no offense, Marcus on the mineral stumps. Cause I know they certainly had the opportunity. I know from your work with us looking at the mineral content of those that they absolutely compete with some of these food plot forages, but, um, those are the ones that gave me problems. Now, the one that shocked me the most, I was okay. I didn't pick dogwood. I lost on that one. I was okay. I, I, I can reconcile dogwood winning. The Damaris and Lashley pulling poison ivy out. That that was the <laughs> one that's sticking with me. That was yeah. not in my top three whatsoever. That one surprised me. Uh, of course, do, uh, deer eat dogwood. But uh, I, I really thought that black gum would be the browse. Uh, in, in observations, you most definitely, typically see black gum chosen over dogwood and i also missed the uh the vine i I figured it would be greenbrier over poison ivy but uh the the soybeans yeah i got that in fact there's there's a publication i don't know if y'all have seen it this guy wrote this book and (laughs) about how deer choose soybeans over virtually any other plant that that they might have available to eat so uh that's what i'm going with in the <laughs> uh, I, I may have seen that book before craig and uh, you might recognize some of the values that uh that we were using for some of these metrics we got by citing that book so uh yeah well, I'm me, glad somebody's using it, so that makes <laughs> Well, I have been using it to hold stuff down on my desk, but I figured I could open it up for that. That works. Uh, there, there's, an appendix, <laughs> there's an appendix or two in the back, you know. You'll hear uh, Joe and Kip and, and Lindsay, for example, when they're talking about the book. Yeah, oh, you you, you got to look at appendix two. That's that's yeah. good information. But, and I, I'm re- I'm reminded, uh, and, and this is not a direct analogy, so please don't take this the wrong way. I, I promise I'm not a vain person, but I remember when Hank Williams Jr. got his first uh, award at the Academy of Country Music, and it was for video of the year. And of course, he had been nominated for all kinds of awards previously, but they finally gave him a video for uh, an award for video of the year. It was uh, for all my rowdy friends are coming over tonight. And and I remember when he accepted the award, the award he told the uh, the people in the academy he said, uh, "I also do audio." So <laughs> I'm, reminded, I'm reminded to tell Joe and him occasionally. There, there's also some text in here that you might look at. Yeah. That's too much reading, Craig. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. When when I looked at these forages, I. I'll be honest. I mean, I selected dogwood, but I was I was still a little bit surprised. I had you know some some uh, good metrics on that, and I, I was thinking about that, but it still surprised me. And to be honest with you, I, 
I was surprised about poison ivy as well, even though I selected it. Uh, I see it browsed heavily. I think Steve and I both had uh, a story behind that, why we thought that might, you know, might be a contender. And obviously, we thought all of these forages that we had in this bracket could could uh, easily win. But uh, when I saw poison ivy pull it out over greenbrier and blackberry, you know, I, I was a little bit surprised. And maybe that was some shock because I had picked it and then it won. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, most people are not probably not thinking about that as being a high quality vine, especially since uh, they're often trying to avoid touching it themselves. But uh, that was a, a real surprise to me. Well, Marcus, that begs the question, why did you pick it if you didn't expect it to be chosen? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I thought, you know, I love a, a, uh, I love a Cinderella story, I guess. And I just thought, man, I've seen it browsed enough. And, you know, it has gone through a, a lot of effort to defend itself with that, with Yerushi also, you know, maybe, uh, Maybe that's for a good reason, and the deer will know that reason, and they'll pick it. But, but Marcus, you go through that list of you see it browsed a lot. So is trumpet creeper. So is blackberry. So is smilax, greenbrier, uh, Alabama supplejack. It goes on and on. Well, I, I think you may have rolled the dice and got that one right. Well, if you really want to drag it out of me, I was very confident that you would not select poison ivy, and I thought. If I, I need to select something Bronson is not going to select because he's not going to win this. Uh, that's what I was thinking oh. that whole time. <laughs> Trying to I separate remember. each other. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking. And, and is it going gonna, is, is gonna to matter in the end between you two if one of you outguesses the other? Is there like, I don't know, some wager or anything? Yeah, we've been, we've been talking about that. And uh, I was thinking it might be a good idea for us to make a little friendly wager. And, and uh, one thing we thought about is if if uh, Bronson wins, then maybe I would shave my head. So, uh, and I then think if, that is a great idea. <laughs> conversely, if uh, if I win, maybe Bronson would grow his hair out. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm willing to do that because I'm I'm confident in my final pick. The the problem is, um, I don't know if I have the capacity to grow it out. So I, I, I may have to get, you know, some type of supplement to put yeah. up here. Maybe, you know. maybe we could, uh, grow the beard out then. Yeah. Maybe I could go that route. <laughs> there you go. I, I would like to propose that whoever is doing the producing and editing in, in the background, please go ahead and show Bronson's pick as winning, whether it won or not. <laughs> 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 Well, speaking yeah. of where we are in that con little friendly competition, uh, I'll I'll throw out I'm I'm I've been humbled. Uh, I'm only at fifty percent so far. I well, picked soybeans too. and poison ivy. That's what I'm, I am. Fifty percent. I'm I'm at fifty percent. I picked uh, soybean and beggar's lice. I I missed the dogwood and I missed the vine poison ivy. Well, based on y'all's comments, maybe it would have been a little better to just roll the dice on these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I guess I'm sitting with dogwood, poison ivy, and beggar's ice. And based on uh, looking at people's brackets online, I may have been one of the only ones that didn't pick soybeans. Well, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again, but I don't think I'm going to be wrong on this one. <laughs> greatly surprised if soybeans does not win and i'll even go so far to say if soybeans does if if the deer y'all chose in this experiment did not select soybeans over <laughs> wood poison ivy or beggar's lice there was some issue physiological going on with those deer so we need to we need to <laughs> There were special I, I was, needs, uh, special needs deer. I, I was thinking there was something with, with the poison ivy. I was like, Damaris has tampered with these deer in, in some way for them to select poison yeah. ivy over Greenbrier. He's, he's tampering with it somehow. 
I they just don't get, buy it. They didn't give them their shots or something. Yeah. They're trying to fend off something. Well, certainly all of these regional champs have a lot going for them. So, so let's kind of finalize which one we think is going to win. Marcus, you want to lead off? Oh, no. Let's, oh. Let's go. I'm sorry. Go with Dr. Strickland. All right. So here's the way it goes. And mind you, I made this pick before Craig joined us today. And, and it just does so happen, though. I might have one of his books here that may have supplemented in my decision making. No. So let me go with my heart and my brain. My heart, I want to pick a native forage so bad. I really want to choose beggar's lice. Uh, that's really what I want it to be. However, I know the power of soybeans. Uh, seen it time and time again, how they are so selected. Deer can't stay away from them. Uh, the palatability off the chart, you know, not only nutritionally are they really good. It was like Kip brought up the other day. They just taste really, really good to deer. So uh, that is my choice of the bracket. I'm sticking with, with soybeans. Craig? I don't mean you want to go with Marcus. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting all mixed up today. The excitement, it's palpable. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just losing it. Dr. Lashley. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, you know what? I have misplaced my book from Craig, and that's why I don't have soybeans as an option anymore, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I filled out my bracket before this as well. And because of that, I, and I did not have soybeans in the bracket. Mm. Uh, to make it to the final four, I think that would be a pretty obvious one if I was looking at it in, in uh, hindsight. It's a, there's no question that it is a powerful forage, but I was left with three options, which I will remind everybody is one more than Bronson and Steve had to choose from. <laughs> uh, well played. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been thinking about that a lot, and and uh, I've been going through it, and my gut, I, I'm. You know, I have a couple of ideas, actually three of them. Uh, that, that was another dig there, Bronson, if you didn't get that. Uh, between my three you. choices, <laughs> you know, I, I've been thinking about why would I pick one of those three. And, you know, Desmodium I, is one of them that I'd want to go with my heart. And I picked Desmodium because I, I just have always loved that genus. It's my favorite plant genus. And uh, my you know, my heart would be to do that. But, you know, if you've ever been to, to a casino, going with your heart and what your gut feeling is is not always the best strategy. Going with the numbers is often that better strategy. And, I, you know, I just keep going back to the numbers on dogwood. And I'm thinking if, if we actually compared these forages, the next, you know, we, we have – over 2% calcium in the young tissue on dogwood, and the next closest one is like a half a percent. Uh, I'm not sure what the soybeans are, but I know that it's not nearly as high. And then thinking about the context where these deer are growing, act, you know, actively growing antlers early in the summer, and the fact that when I think about it, anytime I see dogwood in reach, it's getting browsed heavily. And, and uh, you know, without having soybeans as an option, I, I decided I'd have to go with that one again because it was kind of a shocker to people. And uh, I feel like I may be one of the only ones that picked this one. So I'm going to go with dogwood again. Good deal, Marcus. Yeah, that dogwood it was a real sleeper and, and dare I say a Cinderella story coming out of that, that category, that regional uh, I had, did not have it as an option to choose, so mine came down to uh, either poison ivy or. Oops. <laughs> I'm just totally. I'm totally. Well, we're I'm not going to cut this out either. <laughs> <laughs> I, we just, just we just went on and let you do it too. <laughs> yeah. Well, Craig, go ahead, please. Well, I'm not 
going to uh, try and be very scientific or ecological in this. I'm simply going to go with experience and a touch of common sense. And I know <laughs> that when I see a soybean field and there are deer anywhere around, they're eating those soybeans selectively over what else, whatever else is available. I'm also guessing with regard to the calcium content in the dogwood that whatever y'all are feeding those deer in those pens, it probably has a sufficient amount of calcium to supply the needs of those deer. So I'm guessing that the deer are just choosing based on taste. And for that reason, I'm going to have to go with soybeans. Good, good choice. Very Although, good thing. I also will say I am exactly in tune with with uh, Marcus and Bronson that in my heart it w- it would be fun to see Beggar's Lice win, but uh, I, I don't I don't think I don't think there's a plant that a deer would rather eat than soybeans. So who goes Steve, now? Steve. Steve. Oh, now oh, it's your okay. turn. All right. Well, I had uh, soybeans picked in my my first uh, regional and and uh, I'm sticking with it all the way to the the number one forage so I'm joining with uh, brothers Bronson and Craig and uh, we'll see what happens we're either gonna join to- Marcus at a with a reasonably high percentage of correct picks or he's gonna just go <laughs> way above us must have been nice to have soybeans still on the list, I guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> I what we had four a, selected. I guess I had to be the oddball. Why not? And, and wasn't there a weighting factor about you know getting the final choice correct? What was that? Give you like two <laughs> two credits? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. what you need, isn't it, Bronson, to to win? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, Marcus, that he'd really like to see you with your hair shaped. It's a good look, Marcus. It's a good look. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is getting to be summertime in Florida, so I'll yeah. have to uh, make sure I don't get sunburned. Well, folks, it's, the battle is done. Let's see who won the final forage. Oh, <laughs> oh my oh. gosh. Guys, you do not underestimate the power of the calcium. <laughs> Can you believe dogwood? No. No. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, man. If somebody else picked dogwood out there, we need to see your bracket. <laughs> I want to see it. Please tag us. Send us your bracket if you pick dogwood. Can you believe that? Okay, uh, Luke or whoever's in the background, go ahead and now show who really won. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, if they change it now. (laughs) All right, so I I got two out of the first four and and, and lost out the championship. So I got, what, two points out of five or, or six, two out of six. Craig, what was your score? Assuming the the champ was two points, I, mm. I chose I chose soybeans out of that bracket. I chose black gum out of the brows. I chose greenbrier out of the vines, and I chose beggar's lice out of the forbs. Okay, so you're a two out of the two out of six. Yeah, Bronson. I guess I need to look for some kind of hair tonic. <laughs> I got uh, I had two out of the six as well. My my Good. bracket was. The, the same as Craig's. Yeah. You know, wh- whoever's in the background, instead of switching up the results and all that, could we just show people what Bronson is going to look like when he grows his <laughs> hair out? I think we have the capability of doing that. Let's just let's just see what that looks like for people. <laughs> Marcus, how many points did you get out of this? Uh, I believe I selected dogwood, poison ivy, beggar's lice, and then dogwood for the overall win. So that Bronson, that, you're you're the quantitative guy out of out of the MSU Deer Lab. That 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 sums to five, I believe. That would be correct. That's five out of six. You gotta yeah. love a Cinderella story. 
<laughs> oh my wow. god. Dogwood. Yeah, I'm trying to invent it's been so long since I've had hair. I don't know if it's gonna be <laughs> what color? Gray? Bronson, I guess it should be gray. Bronson's still thinking about growing the hair. <laughs> <laughs> now I wonder how many people are gonna be going out in their woods and cutting down the dogwoods to uh allow them to sprout at this point. I don't know, but I hope they will. Well they're you gonna miss out on here beautiful. They're going to miss out on some beautiful flowers in the springtime if they do. That's great. Yeah. And, and, and keep in mind, that was silky dogwood, not flowering dogwood. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Which yeah, the that's nutritional what? content is pretty close. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. <laughs> Marcus held that back on. If I had had any idea it was silky dogwood, it would have changed yeah. my bracket entirely. Yeah. Yeah. We need to throw a flag there. That's a foul. Well, you know. One of the times that I really started appreciating dogwood as a fo as a forage is when I was collecting it as a graduate student after we had burned. And if it's been top killed by fire and it's re-sprouting where it's all in the reach, it will always be browsed. And uh, that that was my appreciation. That's also when I tasted the leaf and it tastes like a cotton ball. It's at that same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig, did you teach him to eat all the forages that deer eat, or is that just something he I, came by naturally? I, I watched him. I didn't teach him that. I watched. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I, watched I watched his. I watched his mouth pucker up. Uh, <laughs> especially like, uh, sumac. Oh my god, sumac <laughs> is the worst tasting thing on this planet. Here, Marcus, try this one. See how. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is good. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, that's well this amazing. has been fun guys it's been a lot of fun and and folks we hope you've enjoyed us as we uh play this little takeoff on march madness in the process we have provided some important nutritional and ecological information about the plants and hopefully that'll benefit your future habitat management efforts we've also explained some of the the background behind foraging ecology and and the factors that affect which forages deer are going to select and we've shown through our own ex experience that uh, we don't know how to apply that information. We've had a lot of fun using a designed experiment to show that deer do have forage preferences but keep in mind the specific results of this little experiment should be qualified and, and, and don't take it as gospel. These three bucks are in a research facility and they're only three bucks in a research facility with access to a, a full ration pelleted diet. And so their relative needs are not necessarily going to be the same as those in the wild. And we know that relative needs will affect diet selection. So I want to leave you with three key take home points. First, there's no such thing as a silver bullet forage in the wild or a silver bullet forage that you can plant in a food plot. Never rely on a single anything when it comes to deer. Number two, manage to promote forage diversity across your property, under your trees and within your food plots. The third point is just kind of the sum some of it all is if you build it, they will come. Create diverse forage across your property. Let the deer decide what they need and when they need it. It's our job to have it there and then let them do their job, which is finding the forage and benefiting from the quality forage that we provide. You know, we've all had a lot of fun. We hope you've enjoyed our takeoff on March Madness as we travel down the road to the final forage championship if you've enjoyed yourself please share the social media links with your friends and consider listening to our podcasts deer university and fire university you might go out and try to find dr harper's book i believe there's there's several options where that's been seen today during our, our show <laughs> Uh, for Craig Harper, Marcus Lashley, and Bronson Strickland, I wish you effective deer and habitat management and really good hunting. Take care. Absolutely.